making a little bit healthier choices. Sparkling water instead of Diet Coke or other soda. What's up guys, hope you enjoyed that little intro. As you can see, I kind of changed the RGB lighting setup at my desk. We went from a kind of a cool blue and purple RGB colors to now orange. I really like it. I think it looks really good and really changes it up nicely. I haven't been a huge believer in the whole negative effects of blue light and how it affects your sleep. I know that's kind of a popular topic, especially when it comes to technology. But I gotta say, I've fallen asleep with my computer and all my RGB lights on lately, and I've woken up much more refreshed than I have in the past, and kind of noticeably. So I don't know if there's any truth behind that, but who knows, maybe there is. I've gone way off topic with this video, but moving on. What we're actually talking about today, today we're talking about joysticks. And actually one I picked up recently, I haven't had it long, but I have used this one in the past and it's always been a pretty good one. It is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. So this is kind of a different market of peripherals that we're talking about today. Joysticks and flight simulation isn't super common. There's not a lot of people in the States that do it. But I think this is gonna be a topic for another video, but 2020 might be the year where it really gains more attraction, especially with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 coming out. So I thought this would be the perfect time to discuss a budget-friendly option for a joystick to maybe get you into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 as it's supposed to be released sometime this year. We don't have an exact release date or other games like maybe War Thunder, um, DCS World. There's a bunch out there and they're a lot of fun if you're into those kind of games. So personally, I've been getting into a lot of flight simulation stuff lately, not just at work. I do work IT support for a flight academy. So working on simulators and getting to fly them is pretty common in the workday. But also at home, I've been playing a lot of X-Plane 11 and I don't really have a sim setup. So I ended up picking up this joystick and it works perfectly for everything I need. And it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot of functionality to it. It has quite a few programmable buttons on it. Um, it does have a built-in rudder control when you actually twist the joystick itself, which definitely comes in handy, especially if you don't want to set up rudder pedals on the floor and deal with all the extra wires. Probably the biggest thing that stands out with this joystick compared to many others is price point. So I think I paid $34.99 for this joystick and I gotta say they are really good high quality joysticks for the money. We actually had a couple of these set up at the Flight Academy and they we're still using them today and we've had them for quite a while. We're using some in the office when testing certain sim software and having these joysticks at the Flight Academy is a really good quality testament because the students at the school could break a freaking anvil if you let them. So durability on this joystick, I would probably give it 5 out of 5 stars. Taking a little bit closer look of the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, um, I'm just going to go over some of the basic functionality and some of the controls on the joystick and probably just go over what some of the default settings are on it. Um, so first off, this is the joystick. Um, here's the stick itself, which is going to control your angle coordination and also your attitude or angle of attack of your aircraft. Um, and what I really like about this joystick too is it does have the rudder function. So if you want to use your on ground steering or I mean in air too because a lot of times you'll use rudder in air um, you can basically just turn the yoke vertically like that and that'll control your rudders which is really handy and it's really nice as I mentioned too so you can use that instead of having to buy rudder pedals and set those up too so right below the joystick here we have this little tab that you can push up and down um, by default and you'll probably use this the most as your throttle so just throttle up for more power and back down for idle so that's pretty standard so along the left side of the joystick we actually have some programmable buttons we got six of them so you can they're basically just push buttons you can set those functions to whatever you want in your simulator or whatever software you're using and if you're using something like x 11 like I use it's very flexible it has like it seems like millions of aircraft functions so you can program about anything to those buttons back on the side of the joystick we do have another programmable button um this one i don't think i personally have in use right now 
Um, it's probably something you would use in like a combat simulator, maybe like some sort of weapons function in War Thunder, DCS World, something like that I would imagine. Um, a lot of times I do map my brakes somewhere on here if I'm not doing a combat simulator. So right now I think I have my brakes on the main trigger. So that's what I have mapped there and I don't think I have this in use right now. So back on the top of the joystick we have four programmable buttons and we actually have a nice little thumbstick which by default will change your view. So you can actually just scroll around your cockpit or outside the aircraft and you can get different angles and different views on it which really comes in handy. Or if you don't want to use that you can just reach over and use your mouse or whatever else you might use for your views. Um, the buttons are nice by default. I think these two on the right side is the top one's going to be landing gear up, bottom's going to be landing gear down. And then the left two buttons I think I use for trim. So top one I use um, trim nose down, bottom I use trim nose up. So the cool thing about this joystick and a lot of simulators out there today, you can really go crazy customizing the buttons functions and all the different toggles to whatever fits your needs the most. So like right now, I went over some of the stuff that I use, but I actually don't use this as a throttle. I have a separate throttle column that I use. So I actually use this for the aircraft's mixture. Another thing too, some of the default functions you might not necessarily need. Um, I know for X-Plane 11, if you just hit the G key on your keyboard, that'll toggle landing gear up or down depending on the state that it's currently in. So these aren't totally necessary. You could map those to something else of your need. So the only cons for this joystick that I can really come up with would be maybe some increased buttons and toggle functionality on the joystick itself, which really isn't a con. It's got quite a few, but I mean, when it comes to flight simulation stuff, you could always have more. There's so many different controls and functions on an aircraft. So kind of the more the merrier when it comes to that stuff. So the other con that some people might run into with this joystick is compatibility. So on the box, it states it's only compatible with Windows 8, Windows 7, and Windows Vista. Um, I'm currently using it on Windows 10 and it works just fine, but it does exclude Mac and Linux users. Alrighty guys, I think that's going to kind of wrap up this video. Hopefully it gave you a really good insight on a budget friendly joystick or maybe the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator or maybe some other flight simulation games that you've been looking into but just haven't pulled the trigger on yet and I think that's been one of the biggest deterrents of flight simulation is the overall price point of getting into something like it seems like it'd be a lot of money especially when you see home cockpit setups like a lot of people have where they have everything in a 3d cockpit hands-on which ends up costing thousands of dollars to build a lot of times which is fine for somebody that's super into it, but for somebody that just wants to maybe do a little bit of flight simulation stuff, but doesn't want to invest a whole lot, a joystick like this will get you in the game, no problem, and you'll be able to start flying right off the bat. So there you have it guys, a super solid budget friendly option for any flight simulation or aircraft related simulators and games. The Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. If you guys liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the joystick itself or anything else related, make sure to leave a comment below. And if you want to see more tech related videos, product reviews, programming, now some simulation stuff, anything tech related, uh, be sure to subscribe. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.